which just about all of the Loving Father, as we come now to open your word, we ask that you will prepare our hearts for what you want to say to us, each one individually. Speak to us, Lord. Give us understanding of what you want us to know. And teach us more of your love for each of us. And we ask it in Jesus' name and for his glory. Um, well, I won't give you a test on uh, the last couple of weeks, but we said last week we saw that Ruth needed to glean behind the harvesters if she and Naomi were going to be able to survive. Remember that Ruth was a Moabite woman and a widow. In the mind of the average Israelite, she was less than nothing. She was lower than even the criminals in their country. She was a person to be despised and rejected by the Israelites. However, they overlooked that in reality, Ruth was just a pagan sinner looking for grace and kindness. Ruth's need required her to enter and glean in the fields that belonged to strangers, which was very dangerous for the, for the women of those days. You see, Israelite law said that it was acceptable for her to fall in behind the servants of the owner of the field. The owners of the field would have been, or the servants would have been reaping the harvest and she was entitled to go behind them and pick up anything that was left behind or the grains that fell to the ground. This enabled the poor of the country to gather some of their food. It wouldn't, wasn't only Ruth that was able to do this, it was others as well. There was no pensions in those days and so it was necessary for those that needed sustenance to do something like that and to go out. Even though Ruth probably didn't realise it at the time, God was directing her steps. Because remember last week we said, we looked at the fact that she had claimed that God was going to be her God and she was going to follow the God of Naomi no matter what. So God was directing her steps and when she went to glean in his field her life would change for the better in an amazing way even though she was unaware of it at the time. And that's part of the story of Ruth how God directed her life and brought an amazing result into her life. But you see, many of us today are like Ruth, except that we are searching for many different things. But that we're finding them on our terms, not on God's terms. There are many fields out there that look attractive to us. But we, if we glean in them, we are left empty. We are disillusioned with those things that are around us, if we are just gleaning in any of those other fields. Often we see with what we want, or what we think we want, or we think we need, but we are unwilling to pay the price, so we keep on gleaning from one thing to another, and wondering why our life is not working out as it should. You see, when it comes to spirituality, there appears to be a plethora of options out there. A great number of things to choose from, to lead us away and to offer so-called spiritual blessing. However, there is only one place in which we can find the true God and the grace of the living God. This grace is being freely given much more than we can, can ever imagine or dream. It is freely available. All we need to do is accept it. And the emphasis of today's passage is less on Ruth 
as we see the actions of Boaz bring confidence to both Ruth and to Naomi in regard to support for their future. We are introduced to Boaz in verse 1, which we didn't read. Now, Naomi had a rich relative named to Boaz from Elimelech's family. As we go through, we will see similarities between Boaz's response to people leaning in his field and the reaction of Jesus to people seeking their spirituality through him. We read, while Ruth was there, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you, he said. The Lord bless you, the harvesters replied. Then Boaz asked his foreman, who is that girl over there? And the foreman replied, she is the young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. She asked me this morning if she could gather grain behind the harvesters. She has been hard at work ever since except for a few minutes rest over there in the shelter. Did you notice Boaz's reading to the workers? It indicated, indicates that he took his religion to work with him. He wasn't afraid to show where he stood in, relation to, in his relationship with God. He was not a Sunday believer, separating daily life from his beliefs, but he made his beliefs part of his daily life. We can learn a lot from that. I remember in the 1960s when I was on my way to work, I would often see an old lady standing in the door of the butcher shop waiting for the butcher to open. After a while I realised that she was doing the same thing every day while she waited. And I became a bit more interested. And then I realised that she was reading her Bible while she waited for the butcher shop to open. I found out later that she, that lady, and she would have been a, a, quite an elderly lady, would walk down and attend, go to the church for prayer and then come back and stand in the butcher shop reading a Bible while she waited for the butcher to open. She was taking her religion where she, into the community with her. She took her belief where, wherever she went. And that's what Boaz was doing. But Boaz's attention was drawn to a new woman leading in his field and he had made inquiries about her. I wonder, and probably there was, a little contempt in the reply of the servant as he said, she is the young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. You see, he could just as easily have replied, she is Naomi's daughter-in-law. But being a good Jew, he probably had contempt for the foreigner from enemy country. However, he was fair dinkum because he had noticed how hard she had worked since coming to the field. And, she report, and he reported that fact without his prejudices to play out the truth of what Naomi was doing. He was not like the guy who was lined up to buy two books in the bookshop. One of them was entitled Conversations with God. Wow, conversations with God. The other, uh, other one was how to argue and win every time. <laughs> this guy really is like many of us who really don't want to talk with God but try to argue with that, what God has said and done. I remember Kelly. I had a lot to do with Kelly over a number of years because he would quite often come to my place and sit down and start talking about scripture and quoting scripture. But he wasn't quoting it for what he was getting out of it. He was quoting it so that he could argue about it. He would pick out all the 
or we um, passages that could be read in one or two different ways. And he would always take the way that it didn't really mean. He, he, and it wasn't only me he was doing that with. He was doing it, I found out, later with the other ministers in town as well. <coughs> Kelly was not really interested in learning. He was more interested in arguing. But this servant was not like that. He was ready to accept the truth. From this interchange we see that not only was Boaz personally present in his field, showing his faith, but he was interested in what was happening and took notice of what was going on around him. Wow. I wonder how many of us Christians are as keen as that to notice what's going on around us, to be ready to assist those that are in need of help. You see, Jesus is willing to be personally present with all who will come to God. And he is interested in each one of us individually. He cares for each of us individually, on an individual basis. He notices what we do. He is aware of our difficulties and of our problems. Because we read, Then Boaz spoke to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, from now on, don't go to any other field to glean. Stay right here in this one and stay close to my young women. Watch where they are harvesting and follow them. And don't worry about anything. I've given orders to my servants not to har harass you. When you get thirsty, feel free to go and drink from the water buckets that the servants have filled. Wow. Wow. You see, Boaz was concerned for the welfare of this stranger. And by his statements, he's offering care for her and protection for Ruth. If she stayed in his field to glean, she would enjoy his protection and his assistance. Friends, we don't fully realise that Ruth was in a personally dangerous position by going out to glean by herself. Not only was she a foreigner, she was a woman. And it is quite possible that the owner of the floor, all the workers of the field, would take advantage of her as a foreign woman, and they would be in no, da no danger from the law because of Ruth's foreign background. Did you notice, however, that Boaz had commanded his men to leave her alone. Boaz is making sure that no one takes unfair advantage of Ruth. He's ready to be proactive and speak out at the beginning. He is telling her not to worry. He has taken care of the details for her. She can trust him to look after her. He went further and told her that she could bring from the jars which were reserved for the harvesters. Wow. You see, it appears to me that Boaz would do the same for any stranger. He didn't know the full details at this stage, but he was caring for those that were disadvantaged. Friends, the same is true for the child of God. If we will stay faithful in God's area for us, he will bless us beyond our wildest dreams. <coughs> Friends, the reason so many of us miss out on the Lord's best for our lives is that, they, and that we glean here and there and we never settle down and make the Lord's will our purpose in life. I remember as a very young Christian going to a meeting with a man that I admired greatly and had been a Christian many years and was a, a deacon in the church. And we got, I can't remember what we were talking about on the way home, but he pulled up 
at the front of my house, and we sat there talking. And suddenly, Jim burst into tears. He broke down, weeping. You know what he said to me? Stan, he said, I'm living God's second best of my life because I did not listen to God in my earlier day. Friends, we cannot live wherever we like and expect God to bless us. We need to be where God wants us to be. And he is looking for faithful servants and faithful stewards to carry out his work. We read, it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Friends, if we are loved, if we love the Lord Jesus Christ, each one of us has been given a trust. A trust to let others know about him and how he, lo he loves us and how he guides our heart. Are we faithful in broadcasting the news? You see, we can t trust our Lord to take care of us. He is more concerned over our welfare than we are. Think about that for a moment. He's more concerned about us than we are. And Paul realised this when he wrote, We know that God causes everything to work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Don't overlook the last part of that verse, which is a condition. Called according to his purpose. For those who are in his will, for their life. Those are walking, listening to him. Too often, we quote the first part. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good. There is a condition that we don't should should not overlook. We must be doing what God wants us to be doing. To experience God's best for us. If we want God's best, we need to be in God's purpose for our life. But Ruth was overcome by this kindness and grace that was being shown to her. We read, Ruth fell at his feet and thanked him warmly. What have I done to deserve such kindness? She asked. I am only a foreigner. You see, Ruth wasn't expecting this response from someone of such importance who would not normally even acknowledge her existence. Ruth recognised that Boaz was doing much more than was required. And she was humbled in gratitude for what he was doing. When was the last time you or I were overwhelmed by what God is doing in our life? And bowed before him in gratitude and thankfulness for what he is doing. In answer to Ruth's question, Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. How you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Boaz obviously took an interest in what occurred in his area and was already aware of what Ruth had sacrificed for Naomi, although he had not previously met her. He also prays for God's blessing to come upon Naomi and Ruth. <coughs> At this clear point, Boaz was unaware that God was going to use him answer those blessings which we will look at in further down the track. We often forget that there are many things that have influence on our lives. 
Some years ago when I was living on my own, I was having my evening meals at a home that took in boarders. One night, the hostess said to one of the boarders, You didn't tell me you were doing such and such on Saturday. The boarder replied, I'm not. Who told you that? She replied with the mother-in-law of the girl he was going out with, told her. That's what they were doing on Saturday. His reply? Well, if she said so, I must be. <laughs> <laughs> Are we like that with the Lord? God is leading us. Are we letting him lead us? Even though we don't know where we're going. It is good to remember that God is aware of what is happening in his world. He is aware of your actions, whether they are for him or against him. He is also waiting and wanting to bless us if we are ready to respond to him. Yes, so often we call out for God's blessing. But, is it, but in times of need. But what about the other times? Are we listening to him? Are we allowing him to speak to us? We read, May I continue to find favour in your eyes, my Lord, Ruth said. You have given me comfort and have spoken kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servant girls. Friend Truth was overcome with gratitude for the kindness being shown to her and to Naomi. But how do we respond to God's blessing in our life? Do we just accept it as something we ought to have? Or are we thankful and tell God how thankful we are? Friends, day by day we should live our lives in such a way that we please the Lord. But how do we do this? By loving him, by worshipping him, and putting him first in all that we do. Wow, tall order, which we can't do on our own. We need his help for that. Ruth was overcome with kindness. But as the ad says, wait, there's more. At real time, Mount Boaz said to her, Come here and eat some of this bread and dip your morsel in the sour wine. So she sat beside him, uh, beside the reapers, and he heaped up her, for her some per, parched grain. She ate until she was satisfied, and she had some left over. You see, Boaz invited Ruth to join him at the meal table, and he sat close enough to her so that he could pass her what she needed. He didn't care about her past or what others might think. He provided more than she needed because she had some left over. And after Ruth left the table, Boaz continued to work on her behalf. He was even working behind her back to take care of her. He was working for her good, even when she did not know it. For we read, when she got up to bleed, Boaz instructed his young men, let her bleed even among the standing sheep, and do not reproach her. You must also pull out some handfuls for her from the bundles, and leave them for her to glean, and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. Did you notice? Boaz commanded his men to drop handfuls of grain on purpose. Make sure she gets it up. <coughs> he was aware of her sacrifice and of her kindness. He wanted Ruth to get so much in his field that she would not go anywhere else to glean. This was so that he could provide some form of protection for them. When Ruth left that day, she left carrying a, a half bushel of grain. It was more, enough, more than enough to feed the two women for a week or more. 
You see, Ruth had no worries when she was in Boaz's field. No one harassed her. No one hindered her. She rested when she was weary. She ate when she was hungry. She drank when she was thirsty. Every need was met by Boaz. <coughs> but Ruth had, not, had to do the cleaning. The question comes to you, to each one of us. Have you found a spiritual feed where all that you need is provided? If not, I recommend that you come to Jesus. He will provide abundantly in every way, even when we don't know it. Your past is no barrier between you and God when it is, has been dealt with by Christ. You are brought into a position of nearness to Him. Our duty is to receive what He gives us and to enjoy it to the full. Friends, Jesus is always working behind the scenes in our lives to bring about his best for us. This is grace indeed. It is much greater grace than Ruth received from Boaz. Because Boaz knew about Ruth's background and her activities and motives. Jesus knows everything about us. Everything that there is to know, even those secret places that no one else might know. Jesus knows everything, and yet he still loves us and he desires to be with us. He calls us saints, even though we often give in to sin. He calls us friends, although we continually fail him. Friends, that is grace, pure and simple. Simple. And that grace I find amazing. Come and come. Teach us to look at your grace. Help us to draw on it. And help us to live the life that you want us to live. And guide us moment by moment in all that we do. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.